Hi and welcome to this vlog. Today we are gonna dispatch and butcher one of our goats. She is a year old so we thought that that uh, age was right to take them. So we are gonna butcher and then we're gonna hang her to dry age in our uh, impromptu dry ager. <laughs> that we are processing today is the kids from last year. This one is one of them. She is from April last year and we are now in March. So it's pretty close to a year. Uh, she is well and fat and the other one he is standing over there. We actually didn't. He, he didn't get born here uh, but he is a buck so unfortunately we can only have the one and only bebop right there uh, that takes care of the girls. Um, so he, he wouldn't stand a chance in the mating season or breeding season, I think. Uh, so we're only gonna have one buck because otherwise we would just get too many goats. Uh, and I guess this leaves us to why we have the goats. The first reason is that we just love their unruly nature. They're quite a chaotic animal and they will seek out ways to keep you inventive. Especially with uh, their ability to just escape from anywhere. We have really good fences down here so we haven't uh, had that happen yet. But Bebop is working on it. Um, and the other reason is just that we bought this house that is right next to our main house up here. Uh, and with that we got a plot of land, as you can see here, where the muscovy ducks uh, live out on and they have a little pond and so on. Um, but it's, it's quite a big... Okay. But it's quite a big plot of land with it and the muscovy ducks, they only cut the grass a little bit and we do have the geese they also cut the grass a little bit but all the wild raspberry plants and blackberry plants they don't take care of them so we know that we weren't gonna have the energy or time to go and manually just take down a lot of bushes uh, every summer so our natural investment was to get to get goats because they are natural grazers and they will take care of basically any weed apart from stinging nettle and really poisonous um, plants as well. Uh, so with this of course we wanted a family pack so we didn't just want a doe and another doe or a buck and another buck we wanted a family. So a buck and a doe is gonna breed and we're happy about that because we wanted to do some milking and you gotta have some breeding for the milk to uh, be produced and that is gonna of course breed more goats and then you're gonna be stuck with a lot of goats on your hand if you don't take care of that. Now we could sell them but we're very happy and proud of having meat born and raised here. Um, so we wanted to take care of the meat as well as take care of the dairy products. Um, and we're, we're very excited to see how that pan out, uh, if, we, uh, uh, if we get a good flow with it or not. So with good reason there are laws and restriction as to how you are permitted to dispatch and butcher your animal at home. Uh, you are allowed to do it at home but you need to follow some steps to assure that the animal is not uh, at risk of suffering needlessly. So we're not allowed to use um, kill cones. So you put the animal in a, in a cone shape and you just cut the throat. That is not allowed. Uh, however, you are allowed to dispatch chickens and ducks and turkeys and geese and such with an axe. So anything where you can get the, the head off in one go 
is allowed. Uh, but anything other than that, you're going to need to sedate the animal if you are to bleed it out. Uh, now, bigger animals like cattle and goats and sheep and so on, you must sedate before bleeding them out. Uh, and you can do this in various fashions. You can do it with uh, a rifle, a gun. Um, the one that we have chosen, because my husband do have a hunting license, but we didn't feel at ease uh, with shooting it on afar. We wanted to be sure that when we did it, the animal just went knocked out cold. So that is why we got a a captive bolt stunner or a packed, uh, captive bolt gun and it is right here so it's it's quite heavy actually it's it feels good that it's that heavy uh, so this thing you load up with a, a tiny bullet or a little ammunition and then it will shoot out a spike from here uh, so you just put it on the animal uh, most animals you do it on the uh, right on the forehead, but goats are, are so thick skulled there that you do it on the back of their necks. Uh, so they are knocked out cold, like their nervous system is gone by the time you bleed it out. Uh, of course it can still go wrong, but I, I, we felt that this was the, the best option. And we do have the ammunition right here. The yellow ones for mutton, sheep. Uh, or goats. So um, I thought this was the best way possible to do it at home uh, and hopefully it goes well. That is the most important part. It's all in German but we can read German, no problem. Here's the sheet. You can see they shoot them at the back of the head. Not cows, interestingly enough. They, they still do it with the forehead. Okay, so we got to try it and it has almost no recoil. As you can tell, we have earplugs in and my husband is gonna take a trial one a run as well. We just made a little hole here. So we are almost ready. We picked out a spot here in the sun where we can stand and uh, butcher her. We have uh, assorted knives, we have some buckets and we have hooks. And we chose this place for her to hang because it's not so high. Uh, and we're gonna keep everything, all the organs and the blood, and we're uh, gonna make a little soup for our dog that she can have uh, on top of her kibble. And we're gonna use the meat for, uh, for us primarily. So I'm very excited about how easy this was. I usually butcher the chickens and the ducks with uh, an axe, but there is so much hesitation with an axe because you you need to get a good swing and the animal needs to lie perfectly still. This one, it was over in literally a second. Uh, she had some tremors in her body afterwards, but it was over so quickly. So I'm very happy about the captive bolt gun. That was, it, it worked like a charm. And she was also very sweet with the handling. She just came up here. She didn't know what's going on. Absolutely no stress. Uh, and then it was, again, it was over in a second.
Okay, so we are done now. Uh, the whole process was so easy and it went so well. We're very pleased with it. We have four of these little natural bones for Dougie. <laughs> She's eager to get them. Uh, and then I really like this one uh, or this goat in particular because she was born and raised here, but she had this cute little marking on her back. As you can see, she has a spot. So I kept um, her skin and I am gonna um, uh, prepare it so I can use it behind my saddle. Uh, I thought that was gonna be a very nice way to remember her by. Okay, so she is officially in the fridge and this is our setup. Here we go. She's hanging here nicely. We didn't put a, ho a hook in the top because we just didn't get around to it. So we just used one of the old shells in it. And right down here is our little um, ventilator. And we have uh, the salt over there. And here we have the thermometer. Let us take a look. It says 1.2, perfect temperature. Uh, and the humidity has risen, of course, because she is straight out uh, or straight, straight out of her skin, I should say. Uh, so she will hang here for a couple of days. We will open the door now and um, ever so often just to ventilate even more because uh, there isn't a, a to and from hole in it. So the air is just going to circulate and we're going to bring new fresh air in every day. I think I'm going to check on it. So yeah, time to make some goat broth for this guy. So I am preparing the broth here or the soup for our dog. Uh, I bought some carrots and chopped up and then I got some pumpkin from last year's uh, pumpkin. And we have some rice cooking here. And then we have the goat leftovers down here. There is some liver and some organs and uh, a lot of the fat because she was really fat. Uh, and we are gonna mix that up with some water and then we're gonna blend it a bit, I think. And then we're gonna add the vegetables and the rice at the end of it. And then we're gonna put it in bags so we can put it in the freezer for uh, the year to come. Okay, so we are keeping some of the pumpkin and carrot chunky. So we're gonna add them in later and some of the pumpkin we're gonna add uh, now as the meat is cooking so we can blend it a little bit so it's nice and, and gooey. And then we have some chunky parts as well in it.
we ended up with 13 bags of the goat uh, broth for our dogs Mulan and she really enjoyed it. She has tried it some different ways now um, and from these 13 bags we are able to give her three meals per bag. Uh, each bag is about half a kilo. Uh, so each bag are three meals. If we choose to water it down to make it more soupy, we will get at least four meals or five meals or even more out of this. Uh, so she has for many days to come. So we are down here at the little house, uh, day two. We are checking on the goat. And here she is. Let's check the temperature. So it is a lot better today. It says 1.7, if you can see it there, here maybe. And 83 points humidity. It looks like it's drying very well, not a problem there. You can see, you can just imagine that humidity or water is actually getting in the salt now because it is sticking to the sides. So it is gathering a little humidity. Now this is a very, very basic setup, I guess. Uh, this this is very primitive um, but as you can see it is sun outside so we couldn't hang it outside it's simply too warm so uh, this is a, a great new thing for us to have a dry aging fridge and we will see how she does in a few days And you can just see that the fat is drying up nicely. Super pleased with that. Very nice. So it is the evening of the last day. We hung her for four days and we are getting her up to the big house where we can butcher the pieces and put her in vacuum bags for the freezer. So we are done with the butchering. It was very cool to see how well all the meat turned out. We actually also tried a little bit. We tried one of the chops and it was very delicious. It tasted almost like ribeye to me, like it had no goat flavor whatsoever. And I was a little bit surprised about that. Unfortunately, our vacuum pack uh, gave up on us, so we're gonna have to uh, just throw these in the freezer in normal freezing bags, which is very disappointing, but we're gonna uh, eat a lot of goat this summer <laughs> because of it, so that is very nice. It was very tender and delicious meat, so we are happy and looking forward to seeing what we can make out of this.
I am down here at the little house where we store our meat in our little freezer here. And for some reason, the vacuum packer actually started working. So we have vacuum packed meat right here, which is very awesome. So we ended up with a lot of meat and I can't wait to use it in all different kinds of ways. Uh, we have a lot of plans about our next butchering um, that we're gonna make uh, kebab and shawarma out of it. So that's gonna be a process in itself and we're gonna have to build a little grill outside and so on. Uh, but for now we are very satisfied with this process and I hope this video gave you a little information about the butchering process at home from start to finish.